This is the ERP Advisor. Today's episode, how to have a successful demonstration with a software vendor. Thank you for joining us for our uh, September selection month. Today's topic is how to have a successful demonstration with a software vendor. Sean, thanks for joining me today. Sure. As always, thanks for having me. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, um, going through a selection in and of itself um, can be daunting and overwhelming. Um, But then having to organize, coordinate, figure out all the demos associated with the solutions you're looking at, um, there's a lot to consider um, to help you achieve your goals, right, as a business. And so with that, um, I was going to start with what steps do you need to take prior to a demonstration um, to ensure you're headed in the right direction? Mm, That is a great question, as always. And I think (laughs) this is why, yeah, we we wanted to do September ERP selection month because it's almost like, um, you know, maybe not quite as bad as like an infectious Mm. disease. That's terrible. But but the risk of these selections is very real. Right. So the more we can be aware, we should get some ribbons, some bracelets, whatever Mm. it is, Mm. you know. Be careful with your ERP selection or right. something like or that. Or I survived. I survived. <laughs> right. oh God, like, the demo that season. Is a great and idea. Yeah, especially on the implementation. I survived right. an ERP implementation. Yeah. And and I, I mean, of course, we don't want to compare to any of the situations that people go through personally. I've right, had right, some right. people go through some things That's personally. Right. We all have. Yes. Now that being said, yeah. much like some of these other situations, we think that education. Mm-hmm is what's going to help people the most to get through their selections. So that's that's what we're focusing on in September, which I think is wonderful. So to get to your point, right, which which is really the crux of the whole situation, because what happens is a company, a nonprofit, quasi-government agency or government agency, somebody in those organizations Mm -hmm. says, you know what, we need a new Mm -hmm. ERP. So they go online and say, you know, what is the ERP for my industry or whatever those things are that they look for, up come the names, or they call somebody that they knew just went through an ERP selection, or they know from what they've done in the past, who knows, uh, their grandmother's uncle's father's dog walker works for, uh, you know, some random company that's an ERP company. It's like, mm-hmm. oh, I'll talk to that person. I'll just get that. It'll be fine. Right. That's that's where people's awareness of what apps are out in the market Mm -hmm. usually comes from. And Mm -hmm. then they usually reach out and they say, hey, I want to see a demo. Mm. And it's it's a little bit like what you would do when you buy a car. So I want to buy a car. So I want to go test drive some cars. Totally makes sense. Right. And, you know, the specifications of this of the car do they really matter? You know, if it's a, a Honda versus a Hyundai versus a Toyota versus a Ford versus a Chevy versus whatever, uh, you know, maybe you want electric, maybe you don't. There's some key decisions you have to ask, but really it usually leads to a test drive, right? Mm-hmm. I can go test drive this car and see what it's like. An SUV right. versus a truck versus a sedan, whatever it is. Right. And then whoop, you kind of make the decision and go from there. ERP is, is a little bit different though, because yeah, you can do the demo demonstrations, but you have to mm. understand, what are you demoing? Right. right. It's not like getting in a car that has four wheels and an engine and a steering wheel. You know, some cars now have two engines, right? I don't think there's electric cars that don't have steering wheels yet. Are there? Mm, I don't yeah. think so. Yeah, I've got yeah. a friend of mine who's working on a company that's got the uh, the personal flying uh, planes. So that would be different, mm-hmm. but that's a different kind of category. Right, right, right. But, but the point of what I'm trying to say is, is <clears throat> in ERP means different things to each different organization and the vendors are totally different right so if you call microsoft versus unit four versus n4 versus odo you're going to have completely different discussions about completely different Mm. products now do they do ar ap gl and you know inventory yeah but the way they do it is Mm -hmm. all different Right. right So, so you have to understand before you do the demo to get back to your question, you have to understand the, what do you need to see? Right. The needs, Mm -hmm. 
Yes. You know how that goes. Yes. That's always important yes. to us, right? The first and foremost the first of and anything. Foremost. What do you need? Yep. I can imagine when you're, you know, we're working with our children, right? And they come up and we're to us and say, oh, you know, I want blah, blah. Like, why do you need this? You know, <laughs> that's like the first question. Like, why? Oh, uh, I don't really and know. And if you don't know... Right? Then it's sort of mm-hmm. like rejection. Go back, figure out what you need. Come back with like a business yeah. case. You can imagine what my kids' lives are like. So it's <laughs> a little sad. But okay. I hope you saved up all their business write-ups yes. right? or their requests. Well, see, my daughter <laughs> did the right thing. She's <laughs> She is the marketer of the family. Um, she put together videos oh. of two of our clients. She, built, okay. she wrote raps of two of our clients, okay. South Metro Fire and Stephen Roberts Originals. Mm-hmm. And she talks about, you know, uh, South Metro Fire is the bomb.com. And then she goes through this whole thing. It's hilarious. <laughs> it's so funny. And she can get anything she wants from yes, when she right. does that. So right, right, right. Anyway, I Cute. digress. Thank you, marketing team, for keeping us on yes. track. <laughs> but the key thing is understand your needs before you go do the demo. Because yeah. unlike a car that we've all been driving cars for a long mm. time, right? And cars have been around for a long time. Like, it's just kind of known in public information or knowledge or the what is uh the cyborg from uh, star trek the collective mind mm. you know where everybody knows what a car is all about right it was just not there for erp Your still after 60 70 years of these things being around you know like i said you look right. at inventory from odo versus um pick somebody uh, sap mm-hmm. um uh, s for hana cloud versus sap s for hana private cloud public mm. cloud versus private cloud versus um net suite it's different yeah so know what you need first before you even get into those demos okay and so asking questions of what to include in your demo so i guess like the erp speaking generally but then it can be narrowed down based on your needs right um and industry and business type and all of that right Absolutely. but then also too come in customizations oh for your needs too, right? Mm. So like that would be involved in what yeah. very specific questions you ask, right? Exactly. It yeah. would. Yeah. Now, I do think uh, Will and Rebecca are going to have to edit this tape to get rid of that. Uh, how, how many words is, how many letters is customization? Oh. It is like the four Those letter number. word of oh, ERP, yeah. right? No but customizations. Okay. We're all adults here. We know what we're doing. Yes. You don't want the customizations, right? Because there are horror story after oh, horror story okay. of all of these companies and organizations and everybody else uh, we just had a discussion uh, this week there's two major customization stories that i can share with you okay. that the problem with customizations is you customize the app and you are stuck with that thing mm. forever because you can't necessarily upgrade those customizations oh no no sean we have a cloud-based system and we update the cloud-based system every two years or every twice a year and your customizations get um uh, moved over with it yeah but you better regression test it make sure it still works because if the plumbing changes in the app and your customizations are required on that plumbing and you move a pipe from one place to the other the whole thing can blow up so customization's bad, 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 even though everybody has to do it. But but here's the thing, though, that we had two situations happen just this week. And and, and this I'm going to go through these in detail because that's kind of what these calls are about. Mm-hmm. This is like the real guts of right, the situation. Right, right. In the trenches. In the trenches. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's like, it's like uh, I have lots of analogies because I've, I've been watching um, – been catching up on Yellowstone, oh, right? Okay. Which is, whew, that show is intense. But you know, you're on the farm and you're like, you gotta go do whatever and you put on the big gloves and you, you know, it's like, that's how this conversation mm-hmm. feels like. You better put on the whole bodysuit because it's about to get messy. But here's the thing we had a client that got, we got him onto a product and um, almost immediately uh, after they said to us, no, guys, we don't need your help on the implementation. We got it. <laughs> Great. Um, they start customizing the heck out of this app i mean lots and lots and lots and lots of millions of dollars of customization to now um the ceo says to the guy that we advised um i hate this thing oh no i want it out oh no and you know our our guy (laughs) who's extremely savvy technical guy very 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 savvy Mm -hmm. business just very great 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 person it's like, uh, what do we do with this, right? Do we start from scratch? Do we get another app? Like maybe just go get some small thing that's very specific to our industry. 
like, what do we do? That gets back to your question, mm -hmm. right? And the reality is, is that when you have a situation where you're, you're in an implementation or better yet, you're in a selection and you start to hear things from your users that are really unique requirements, like, ooh, wow, we mm -hmm. really need that really unique thing. Mm -hmm. Then you hear the vendors say, oh yeah, we can configure the app to meet that. The vendors will never say customizations. Again, it's the four letter word. Mm -hmm. Every every savvy solution consultant, software salesperson knows never use, use that, that phrase, word. right? So in the selection, in the demonstration process, when you start to hear those indicators, like accounting says something like, you know, well, the way we do invoicing is totally different than everybody else, and we need custom templates for every single customer because we our invoice format is totally different from every customer. Ooh. How is an app, that new app, going to be set up to support mm. custom templates for every single customer? Or maybe there's 50 different templates, right? right? We've had this happen. Um, that's that's where like the you know that feeling of like I don't even I mean I can think of the hair on the back of your neck or whatever I mean it's more like you feel like the gauntlet coming mm. down like oh you know you really got to be aware of that and then when the vendor says like I said something like oh we can definitely do that but it's going to require mm -hmm. some heavy configuration right <laughs> oh boy you know that's code for customization <laughs> right so when you do the selection you do the demo again you got to get like your homework done. You got to mm -hmm. say, this is what we need. And the, the more detail you can get, the better. Give that to the vendor. Okay, you got to show us this. Like you really got to show us this, right? Mm -hmm. And then the vendor starts going through it. You can't be on your emails mm -hmm. doing a selection. If, if you're the person responsible for um, the, the overall selection, mm -hmm. you can't be on your emails during the demos, pardon me. Okay. You cannot do that. Like shut your email down. Turn off your text. You have to be fully in it. You have to tell your family, okay. I'm out. Don't 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 call me today. Please. Mm. Please, please, please. If if the water breaks and you need me to come home or whatever, like too bad. Or, you know, the kiddo uh gets sick, like, can you please handle it, honey, to your, you know, your your significant other? I don't know. Mm. But you really need to be able to pay attention because all of the indicators are there during the demonstration. Because mm. again, I, I always say this that in my experience after what, almost 500 projects with this firm, mm. and there were hundreds before then, and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. I think Erica and I have talked to over, I don't know if it's 800 or 900 companies wow. about working with them, mm -hmm. or different types of projects right. with maybe the same company. Right. I see all this stuff. I see that the indicators are there, you know. What is that? I see dead people, you know, from, what was that, from the fifth, fifth sense oh, or fifth? Um Sixth sense Six something? Yeah, great movie, right? I see customizations. <laughs> <I really laughs> or configurations. Do. Or con heavy <laughs> configurations, right? <laughs> or that's a third-party bolt-on solution, right? Or, oh, we have an ISV who does that, independent software vendor who does that. So that's why we're doing this for September, you know, the uh, ERP selection month, so that folks really can see for themselves, like, don't not pay attention during the demo. Demos. Pay attention. The indicators are there. You just have to sort of know what to look for and what to hear and be willing to say to the person, no, 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 stop. Just stop, please. <laughs> Hopefully you can say it like, oh, I have a quick question. You know, you can do it with manners and courtesy. But sometimes you have to say stop because they just right? And say, okay, I have a question. You just said blah. Mm. You just said that's going to require heavy configuration. Why? Oh, because the way our app works is this way. But what you, what mm. that person over in the corner just said is they want it to work that way. Mm. Oh, okay. So that's a configuration or is it a customization? Well, it's a lot of configuration and yeah, it's probably a customization. That might be fine, but at least now you know. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm trying to say is keep your eyes open. Listen with your ears. Put the email down. Put the text down. Put the everything mm -hmm. focused, you know, on on listening and observing during the demonstration. And you'll be surprised what you don't hear. But you'll hear it. Right. Okay. That's that great very, advice. Like Zen. I don't yeah. know. Like Zen and ERB or something. <laughs> right. Do. It's <laughs> almost like no answer is an answer. That's right. right? Like if you don't, then if no it's not included, then answer. you know there you something go. is missing. And if that's missing, what else could be missing? Right. 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 Because yeah. here's, I'm going to say one more thing on this. Yeah. Here's the real kind of like, <clears throat> I don't know. I've got to watch my language this morning, but it, the real, I'm just going to use the word crappy. <laughs> the real crappy part of this is 
later on in the in the implementation and you know you start you do a walk through the app and you're like wait a minute why doesn't it do blah like you said in the sales process mm-hmm. oh yeah we can build that but you said it was going to be included well i mean we can build it it's okay you're going to pay for it right and you don't don't think that there's you can contract and i can do a statement of work for a fixed fee and anything beyond this scope is not going to be included it's, it's, it doesn't work that way. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's like it's like doing a construction project and you're like, okay, I want that fourth bedroom. And they're like, well, there's only three included in the construction of your new home. So you're going to pay. Well, but I told you I wanted four. Okay, but the contract that you signed says mm-hmm. three. three. So your statement of work doesn't include, you know, a thousand hours to build your very, very, very custom way that you do purchasing that nobody else does it that way. So the vendor is going to be like, the implementation partner is going to be like, we can do it, which is amazing, right? Yeah. Some, some of them are like, we're too busy, we can't do it. But we can do it, but it's just going to cost you more money. So you have the risk on the back end mm-hmm. by not seeing <laughs> these things up front. And having to pay. Yeah, and then you have to pay for mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Geez. Well, when it comes time and you've decided you're going to do demos, how does a company – determine whether or not the demo should be done on site oh. or if they can be done remotely. Yeah. All right. You want the truth? Of course. You can handle the truth <laughs> yes. because you've been doing this for what, eight years? Almost. Almost eight years. Yes. Wow. Hard to believe. Or seven. Seven years. Something. That's a long time. That's mm-hmm. a lot of ERP. Yes. <clears throat> so 84. Yeah. 84 different kinds of uh, you know, because we do once one of these a month, like that's mm-hmm. incredible. <clears throat> and I think we just hit our hundred uh, ERP minute that's episode right. two. That's well yep. done to everybody, the marketing team, yep. and to Will, who we'll meet later. That's right. Talk about that in a minute. <laughs> but anyway, um, a guest appearance. Exactly. You know, here's here's the thing. How do uh, how do online meetings usually go? Right. I'm not even. I mean, this could be confessions of an ERP advisor, right? And I could tell you what I was doing during um, a couple calls yesterday, right? Mm-hmm. I, I do I do a lot of calls, and I'm I'm pretty good, so I can sort of say things and and like, um, you know, people are like, "Wow, that was great." I'm like, "Okay, good. Now I can answer this email, right?" Mm-hmm. <laughs> we all kind of do it. I'm just right. being honest. Multitask, right? multitasking, uh-huh. and it's hard not to multitask when you don't really need to put all your attention there and you get other emails and texts and blah, blah, blah. And you're like, Oh my gosh, I got to get home by a certain time. Uh, if I could just bang these couple things out, great. You bang it out you come back to the meeting and you're fine. You know, we have one of our uh, implementation partners who's renowned for being on multiple calls and doing emails Mm. all at the same time. He's pretty high up, not in projects that much, but Mm -hmm. it's sort of a gift, but at the same time, it's hard. So if you do online demos, so you're doing, you know, zooms or teams demos how many of your people are really paying attention? That's the first thing you have to look at. Now, maybe it's not that important. Maybe you don't really like care about their feedback. I don't know. I hate to say that, like, mm-hmm. but you want to give them the opportunity to see it. And if they think some other things are more important, fine. That might be for your little less impactful stakeholders, but your key stakeholders that you really need their feedback on, you got to make sure you got their attention. Mm-hmm. So that would tend more towards doing on site. Okay. Now, just because you're on site and every demo that we do now, it's so funny, actually, especially since COVID, everybody has their own laptop. That wasn't the case before COVID. People still had desktops, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And so they'd right. come into a meeting and we'd print out a scorecard and give it to everybody. Now we give everybody a scorecard electronically Okay. Uh, because they have their machines with them. But if they have their machines with them, are they checking emails during the meeting? Are they on text still? So the risk is still there for for on person versus right. um, you know online, but usually what happens is when they're online and there's there's a good demonstration solution consultant um, and maybe there's a sales team there and maybe some other people from the vendor, they engage really well with the client. They can ask questions back and forth, and funny enough, as I've seen that dialogue is just as much an indicator of who the finalist is going to be mm. than the software fit to the vet, to the client's requirements. Hmm. And so for us, it's extremely helpful to have everybody in the same room so we can watch the dynamics of what's happening. And again, from a person that's going through a selection on their own, these are my tips. That's what I'm doing. These are all my tips. Mm-hmm. You watch what that dialogue is like. 
you watch how the people in the room who who are really important to making this implementation go right interact with the implementation partner and if mm. there's no interaction that's bad yeah. right if there's a lot of interaction that's good there right. you go that wasn't that that tricky but right. but that interaction really mm. drives it's because it's just the beginning of what's about to be a whole lot of interaction through the implementation mm -hmm. right so so you want to make sure that the communication lines, the way they communicate, what they're communicating about is really on the same level of reality, right? And, and the other thing that, you, that I look for, I think our team really looks for is, does our client like the implementation partner resources mm. or the, even the salespeople? Oh, Sean, the salespeople are gonna go away um, so they don't matter as much. Well, who are we gonna call if there's a problem during the implementation? We're gonna go back to the person that made that commission on the sale. Right. So it does matter if yeah. we like them or not. But that's another little nugget, another golden tip. I, if I haven't put everybody to sleep yet, that's my indicator. No. Wake up, as Rebecca yawns. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, I'm just kidding. But, but, but I really want everybody to understand this. It's always mm -hmm. better during the demos to mm. have somebody from the implementation team there. there. Don't just do the demos with the salespeople, the sales consultants that aren't going to be part of the implementation. But Sean, how do I know that? Like I would say to my kids, ask. Just ask, ask before you do the demo, hey, can you please have somebody from the implementation team there on our demonstration? Hmm. Oh, they're too busy for that. Well, but if they're Why? too busy for me now, right. what are they going to be like during the implementation? Oh, they're very focused on our implementations. You mean there's not somebody who can come out and get to know my business a little bit while we're talking about it all day? Mm. You know, it's free discovery. We always say that too. But it's, again, it's, a, it's one of those little tricks that we've learned that we always ask for some implementation resource to be there. And at the end of the day, those people are the ones that we're really stuck with on a day-by-day -day mm -hmm. basis going forward. But the salespeople are vital. And, and you know, I've seen, um, we had one story where we had a uh, situation. It was, the client hadn't hired us yet. They met with a vendor. And um, there was somebody on the sales team from the vendor. I remember exactly what this was now. And he was texting during the meeting. And the CEO stood up and said, look, Oh boy. My time is so valuable. I have so many things I have to get done. And if you can't take the time to talk to me and you're on your phone while you're talking to me, like, this is not going to happen. Yeah, we're, yeah. we're done. Whoop, he walked out. So, wow. Yeah. So, you know, this is also for the salespeople, the implementation mm -hmm. partners, the solutions consultants. Right. Like, the client is monitoring and watching what you're, you're doing. doing almost every move. Right. Don't forget that. Right. And it's time to shine. This is why you make a lot of money. Do it well. Be there in present time, like aware of what's happening. And again, mm -hmm. when that happens on the client side and it happens on the vendor side and it comes together, it's just it's just magic. It seems so basic. Right. But it's not. It's not. It's right. It's those little things. And, right. Oh, or we missed our flight or we're late or we didn't sleep well or blah, 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 blah. They're all indicators that we look for, right? That's because right. you never really know how the implementation is going to go until it went, <laughs> until you're done, literally. Because you could set all this stuff up perfectly and then, boom, the implementation partner gets bought by another firm and they let go of all those people. That happened to an implementation partner recently. Oh, boy. Yeah, they got bought huh. by another firm and they said, ah, you were changing the direction you guys are out. Well, if you had a contract, they'd be like, uh... Mm. But we vetted all the people. So, so many problems can happen mm -hmm. that if you, if you, with each step, especially in the selection process, especially in the demos, where you just look for the basics, and when the basics are out, it doesn't mean you don't work with them. Mm -hmm. It just means you just, you know, you talk to them about it. Like, wow, you know, you guys weren't that interested in the meetings, uh, software salespeople, because you're on your text all the way to you decide to walk out and you don't waste any more time with it. So... Ooh, wow, that's a lot. That's a lot. Yeah. And, you know, I think in the end, like, you can do the best research to find the best partners for you. But until you're in it, and like I said, in the trenches, do you really, truly know? That's right. You know, that you've chosen wisely. Yeah. Right. Yep. So with that, Sean, let me ask you, um, what if you're in the middle of the demos and they start going poorly? Ooh. 
how like is there does that mean a vendor should be eliminated or are there exceptions um how would you handle that and how have you handled that yeah <clears throat> oh i can think of four different scenarios and i'm going to go through really fast okay <clears throat> the first one is um everybody gets set up all the people come into the room everybody does their intros go through the powerpoint go into the app <clears throat> the app doesn't work and you have, say, 20 people from the client side, 10 people mm -hmm. from the implementation partner or software side, 30 people that have all set aside their day, and the app doesn't, doesn't work. work. Right? That, that's happened. <laughs> so y y you have to understand a little bit of the why, right? Because stuff does happen. The client's internet is down. Mm -hmm. Everybody's sitting in the client's conference room, and the internet goes down. It. Oh, my gosh. Right? Fine. You know. Does somebody have a Mifi? You know, I carry one around. But I think that's what they're called. Mifis? Mifi, uh, whatever they are. Oh, the um, personal hotspot yeah, or something personal like hotspot, that? Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Everybody has a cell phone that they mm -hmm. can get online with. So, you know, the implementation partner should have a backup. In this case, they did. Okay. Thank you. And goodness. they just switched over and then brrr, they went on. It was a little slow, but that was fine. We could blame mm -hmm. it on the, the Mifi or the hotspot or whatever. Mm -hmm. Client's internet access comes back up, switch back over, and roll. It's like it wasn't a big deal at all, right? Whew, good job, solutions consultant person. Right. And if I were a software vendor, I would make all of my people carry one. I'd buy them one, and I would pay the 40 bucks a month or whatever that's per right. person. I don't care if I had 1,000 people out there. That's what I would do. Wow. So that was huh. one scenario. Now, <laughs> another scenario was the morning of... Um, this is a little bit outside the scope of your question, but again, I want you to understand these indicators. Oh, our person got sick and they can't come. Who's gonna do the demo, so we have to reschedule. People get sick at the last minute. There's no question about it, right? It, it can happen and it does happen. And so fine, everybody understands and you move. But then this person gets sick again or the person loses their laptop mm. or gets stolen or they have a family member die or whatever. Oh, that's terrible, Sean. How could you say that about this person? Because I know what you're insinuating. Yeah, I'm insinuating they're making excuses. So, and the reason why we knew that was because when we went back to the person um, to ask, you know, how are you doing? <laughs> oh, I'm good. Oh yeah, but I'm, you know, I was sick or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. We had an employee sick recently and I asked her how she was doing and I could tell from the hoarseness of her throat that she was still getting through the sick. I knew mm -hmm. she was sick. I trust this employee. <laughs> anyway, but you, you, if you look at, you know, you look at a person's um, track record, right? What, 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 what happens with them? And with this particular vendor, there were other scenarios that were like that, where they were canceling these meetings because of some extraordinary circumstance. Like, no, it's not. You guys are just faking this. You're just busy. Because mm. remember, these people are very, very busy. Yes. And, you know, the worst thing they can do is start blowing off other responsibilities because then when the busyness ends, nobody wants to give them and bring them into their deal. So that was the second thing. So so watch out for that. Um, a bad demo that we had. <laughs> I'll never forget this one where um, the demo was going pretty well. CEO was there. Different CEO, mm -hmm. by the way. Mm -hmm. Same outcome. <laughs> Um, and and the, the switch from accounting to like the distribution warehouse sort of inventory portion of the of the um, demonstration process and the demonstration person starts coming in. They bring in a different person to do the demo for this, and they were terrible. I mean, horrific. Oh boy, terrible asking questions. But now, how does your business work? And um, you know, like so, you know, we could set it up this way or that way or that way or that way. And you know, it's up to you to decide. And, all of these like, like, oh my gosh, you know, and everybody gets uncomfortable in the room. Mm. CEO stands up, drops an F-bomb and says, I, I can't believe you're doing this to me. Right. <laughs> you know, get that, you know, F out. Whoop, he walks out. Oh boy. Everybody looks at each other like, okay, well that didn't go so well, right? So what can happen is you get a demonstration person that's so bad mm. that every time they start saying something new they, their mouth opens it just gets worse and worse and worse and worse oh so boy. just stop it oh because boy. it's only going to get worse right again these are kind of extreme cases mm -hmm. right but what usually happens the most common case is you're going through a demonstration and you you know as sort of remember the sponsor here might not realize this most of the savvy sponsors do this is the client side person who's probably listening to this right now you know 
your neck's a little bit on the line mm -hmm. for everything you're doing with the vendors. It just is, right? That I'm just going to be honest. So your reputation also is a little bit on the line. So if you get the sense during a demonstration that the vendor really didn't prepare or the vendor really didn't understand the requirements or the vendor really didn't, the software doesn't really fit the need, it's okay to just say, you know, look, I don't think this is going in the direction that we needed to and my people's time is extremely valuable. Mm -hmm. And I've asked them to come here in faith that you would be ready to do this and it doesn't seem like you are. So um, let's stop and you guys, you know, implementation part. Well, you know, my, my colleagues, thank you so much for setting aside your time. Guess what? I just gave you your day back. Right. And people are like, yeah, that's great. I don't have a bunch of meetings. So now I can get through all those emails that I couldn't do because you told me to turn off my email during the demo. Um, and they're like, oh, this is great. I get my time back. Right. And then all your people leave. And then you look at the vendor and you say, what, what did you just do to me? Like, do you realize I had five, 10, 20 people, my colleagues in here and the, I, I set aside all this time and I really bet on you guys. I had faith in you that you would show up and you told me you were going to do it and I thought you were prepared, but you weren't. And then stop it. Don't say another word and see what they say. Oh and boy. you'll see who you're really about to do business with at that point. And that doesn't mean that they're out forever or whatever. They right. could say, you know what? Here's what really happened. Blah. The main guy who was a gal who was supposed to come in, whoever it is, they really did get sick. We had to bring in somebody else. We tried to prepare them, but they just weren't ready. But we really felt like we needed to, to make it work. And we really tried to do that, but, but we failed. Please mm -hmm. let us make it up to us. Okay, good. How are you going to do that? Oh, we're going to bring the other person back and we're going to blah, blah, blah. Let's go, right? Sometimes, though, they'll say, you know, <laughs> we're really just not a good fit for you guys. The, the good, and they'll take themselves out of they'll it. They'll take themselves out of it, right? Or they'll say, we just had a really off day. Or the system was really slow today. Or the, the, you're really going to see what, what their integrity is like and what their character is by how honest they are with what mm -hmm. they say, mm -hmm. right? And that's that. we've had vendors that have completely screwed up demos but have come back and won. Interesting. Yep. Huh. Yep. Okay. Because, again, you know, ERP, like much of life, it's never going to go perfect. Right. It's right. how you handle the That's issues right. or the risks before they become issues right. that matter. So, fine. Let's learn from this. Let's learn about each other mm -hmm. and go from there. Yeah. Whether you take responsibility or accountability or you ask for a second chance, right? That's right. Yeah. Wow. So, I think we're coming to the end of our time, but I just wanted to ask if you had any um, last minute tips or nuggets as you say of what are some very specific things to not overlook when it comes to scheduling demos oh so scheduling demos and um the it it seems like it's just an administrative task oh we just mm -hmm. do the schedule and, and that and that's not true right you need to make sure that you schedule it where you give your vendor ample time to prepare mm -hmm. don't do it hey can you do it tomorrow because then it'll just be a joke right usually. okay also you really need to look at who needs to be in that meeting and don't schedule the demonstration usually on a monday or a friday and why is that mondays people are usually a little behind from the weekend okay they sometimes do internal meetings whatever they're kind of getting organized right friday a lot of people are working from home or they're kind of checked out already mm -hmm. tuesday wednesday thursday you know are good days usually to do demonstrations okay. it gives if people have to fly in they can fly in on monday night mm -hmm. you know you go tuesday um you know now some people will say those are our big three production days uh for the week and mondays and fridays are a little quieter okay fine then then do the demo there um but i, I usually we shoot for tuesday wednesday thursday okay and then another thing is um, when you're scheduling the demonstration, you really, some clients like they're, they do start early, you know, our construction distribution mm -hmm. clients, they do start early, right? But usually you need to give your people an hour or so to just get into the office, get through the critical emails. So they're not thinking about that mm -hmm. when they go into the demo. Right. So we like to schedule the demo maybe at like 9 a.m. and then go till five and don't go any further. Like you'll just wear people out. Mm -hmm. Now, in our final demonstrations, 
only the sponsors there for the whole day, right? We'll bring in accounting and inventory, manufacturing services, uh, the nonprofit people, the grants in, the grants out, whatever. At different times, we'll give them a two to four hour slot mm -hmm. maybe to go through what they want to do. Mm -hmm. But still, the vendor is there and they get worn out too, right? So there's just some realities of don't schedule from 7 to 6 p.m., 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. We're going to do the demo. Like, don't do that to the right. vendor, right? right? That's another key thing. But I would say the most important thing when it comes to scheduling a demonstration is um, like the most important thing. It really comes down to you really have to like know the more time that, that you give some vendor to show the software can be bad sometimes. And why is that? Because if they can't communicate in a short amount of window uh, what they can do, uh -huh. it doesn't matter what happens beyond that point of diminishing return, right? Makes sense. It's like value, 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 no value, no value, no value, mm -hmm. no value, no value. Mm -hmm. And yet at the time, they're like, oh my gosh, you're taking all these right. people's time. So, you know, sometimes like for an accounting demonstration, you know, especially if we have a client that says, look, I know that Microsoft does APARGL purchasing, blah, 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 just fine. But our unique business requirements around revenue recognition are really different. So we don't do all the basic, basic stuff in a demonstration, right? Mm -hmm. We just focus on these key areas. Right. And if the vendor can't show it right away, they don't know what they're doing. doing. They just don't, they didn't prepare. It Why didn't they prepare? Sense. Cause we were busy. Well, what were you busy with? With other deals that were a better fit than yours. <laughs> and they say it without saying it. They right? say it without yes. saying it. Their mm -hmm. actions, you know, yeah. I think Gandhi said actions, um, as actions express priority, right? Mm -hmm. And I love that quote because mm -hmm. it just does show, and it goes back to selections at the end of the day, that the actions express the priorities of the vendors. And if they're not prepared, if they're taking forever, if their their systems don't work or somebody got sick each time or whatever, their actions are what you have to look at, not just their flapping jaws, as my wife likes to say to me. Um, <laughs> what they say, it's what they right. do. do. Yep, because then they will do that in your project as well. That's it. Yep. So, well, Sean, thank you as always for all your great experience and knowledge. It helps a lot of people. So, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay. Yeah.